so first up, quick apologies for the late posting on this video. Uh, some commissions and a bit of life got in the way. But enough of that. This is a tutorial for Aquamarkers, and this is how I went about painting and creating a yellow tulip painting using Aquamarkers. So I start off with a single color here, and this is a good yellow called Marigold. And you can see I've already tested it on a very, very small part of uh, the first petal that I'm working on here. So I bung on the Marigold, and quick as a flash, I get my brush, I get the water on the brush, it's a synthetic size 4 round, and I start mixing the water and the color together. Every time you see me take the brush off the screen, I'm either filling it up with uh, clean water, which is what I did just then, to kind of dilute the color and make it fade and get lighter toward the edges of the petal, or it could be that I'm trying to take um, moisture and paint off it, in which case I'll be blotting it on a piece of tissue paper, but I'll try and tell you which I'm doing and when, although it should hopefully be obvious from what you can see me doing on screen. So what I'm doing here is just adding a little bit of um, clean water at the very top of the petal because the light source is shining down from above. So I want the top of the petal to be the palest, so I'm using that clean water to, di to dilute that color and make it lighter. On the other side of this petal, because it's a tulip, so the petals are really, really big and fat, um, I not only use marigold, but I put in my first bit of the second color, which is oak which is a really nice, warm, ochre kind of brown that I'm using on this to add a bit of shadow to the petals when they're you know, upwards facing, facing the light. Nothing too dark, but just to give a little bit of extra um, it's kind of shadowy quality in there. Here I'm tackling a shadow area of the petal. So I lay down a base coat of the um, marigold marker, and this is, of course, the part of the petal that's away from the light that is you know, curving away on the inside. Now I'm putting down some oak. So I'm just scribbling it on, so I'm going to add the water in a minute and work it all together with the water and the brush, so I don't need to be fussy. So I'm putting on some oak, but I'm not covering over all of the, um, the yellow. And here you can see me adding my third, my darkest color, which is deep sapphire, which is a very, very dark blue. But as you can see, when I add the water and the brush and start to mix all three of those colors together on the paper, the uh, the the deep sapphire doesn't quite go as you know dark and, and as heavy as it looked at first and it blends really well with the marigold and with the oak and gives a sort of a kind of a yellowy green kind of um, color to this petal which is what I wanted because like I said it's the shadowed um, part of the petal it's not the part that's curved outwards facing the light it's kind of on the interior it's close to all the other petals so it's shadowy so um, I'm deliberately using the blue here to give the shadow a kind of a greener edge um, so it's not too dark but you can clearly see that it is a shadowed part of the petal. That third color, the deep sapphire, was very, very, very dark color and it risked kind of staining into the paper so I had to work the brush and those colors around quite a lot to mix it so that um, it wasn't clear where I'd originally laid down those sort of strokes of color. Then when I started doing the shadow up here, I pretty much do it in exactly the same kind of way, but I do make one change. I put on the marigold, uh, and then I put on areas that are going to be oak, so slightly warmer, but also shadowed areas. But this time I decide to dot the color on from the deep sapphire, because I thought the strokes might have, on, on that previous shadowed petal, might have been a little bit staining the paper. Um, so I thought I'll do dots this time because that should be a lot easier then to blend together with the surrounding colors And that's exactly what I found when I was doing this one So I got a nice greeny yellowy maybe some parts slightly brown as you can see here um, You know kind of color to the shadow uh, Without worrying that perhaps the strokes of my very very darkest strongest color were actually going to show up and stain the paper so what you see me do next is I will transition the next two petals that I did after this because um, you've already seen the technique and the colors that I'm using to do those with. Uh, so moving beyond those two, you can see how I'm working around the, the flower and doing little bits here and there. I start on this left-hand side and I'm going to do the parts of petal that are curved and facing the light. So again, I'm going in with marigold and I'm doing the sides that face the light directly just with marigold. I'm not using oak or deep sapphire here. So I've got the marigold on, I get the brush, and I start to blend the water and the color together on the paper. So that's really all I'm doing with the, the um, synthetic brush, which is a little bit stiff, a little bit springier, and I find it better to blend those colors actually on the paper. But you can see me leaving the very edge where um, the sort of the curved over leaf meets the shadow inside and it's white so what I could do is I come back in here with the brush and I've loaded it with some clean water and I just basically work it along that edge 
where the dark shadow meets this light bit and I'm hoping that what it will do, the, the fresh clean water that I'm putting on here will kind of run into the colour giving it this kind of um, light kind of hazy kind of edge uh, to the petal. And I kind of use the same technique on this bottom part of the petal which is more shadowed but I don't add water to the um, the white kind of edge because I want the white edge to just be very, very, very faint, but like you can see there as a highlight, so you can see the difference between the, the petal that is curved over and the shadow part of the petal, which is underneath. The next petal had a very, very shiny white highlight along across the middle of it, so I leave that with the marker. And then when I started to put in the oak, um, it was a little bit flooded. Some of the, the color on the, the thick nib that you can see me using kind of flooded out. So I just turned it around, flipped it, started using the thin nib. I think I'd just been holding the marker upright for too long in my warm hands and it was just ready to kind of flood outwards as soon as I started to use it. Here you can see me adding the water and again, because it's a, it's a kind of a petal that is really facing the light, hitting the light, I'm only using the two colors. There's no blue on here. It's just the yellow and the, the brown. So I'm mixing them together and I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to lose that um, strip of, of bright white highlight that I've got going across the leaf. But the more that I find myself working and blending the colors together, you can see I'm sort of encroaching on that white highlight the whole time and it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so while the water is still wet, while the color, while the paint is still wet, I decide I'm going to blot it using a tissue so I can make a fatter, bigger, wider highlight. So that's what I decide to do here. I would recommend keeping a little bit of fresh tissue paper nearby whenever you do an aquamarcus or watercolors just specifically for blotting. And here you can see me, I just come in and just directly going downwards onto the paint with the um, tissue paper and you can see how much color I'm able to pick up because um, all of the color there is still wet and I preserve my nice white um, highlight across the middle but I also soften the edge of the paint that I've done and make the highlight bigger. So as I start coloring this leaf um, down towards the bottom it is one of the interior leaves so it's a bit more shaded, a bit more shadowy so I get some yellow on there, I get some um, oak and I start adding some of the blue, the deep sapphire and I've left the highlighted area which I'm hoping because I've left that white as I blend the colors in and around it uh, I'll be able to work into that area and sort of gradually let the colors go from dark to light exactly like you can see me doing there but I've got to admit I think I added too much uh, deep sapphire to that one and I think it's a little bit too green so I wish that I'd added perhaps a little bit less so it still was more yellowy than the green kind of petal this big petal you can see me doing on the right hand side here, I, I kind of learned from my mistake and you can see me only putting a little bit of the deep sapphire knowing how strong and how dark a color you can get from it. Uh, and then I start blending in with the size 4 round brush again, blending the yellows into the browns. Uh, and as I work halfway down I decide to use the blotting technique again because it works so well on the other leaf. So I blot a little bit extra on that, preserving a nice white highlight but getting a soft edge. Uh, and then also towards the top of this leaf, I've got a slight drying line on it. So I just sort of add a little bit of clean water there, work it into the, the paint, you know, blot it again to get that nice highlight, but also a sort of lightish area to that leaf, that petal. You might be watching this uh, painting the flower and thinking it's a very strange uh, kind of approach that I have where I do, you know, a petal here, a petal there, uh, instead of perhaps just starting at the top, working to the bottom, or starting on the left, working towards the right. Uh, and I just think it's just the beauty of, of painting any kind of a flower because it's broken up into these lovely bite-sized chunks that are the petals. You can tackle one at a time and you don't have to have too much of, of a method. If you want to, you could do all the shadows first because that would help you do the highlights or, or vice versa. It's, it's completely up to you. Uh, and I think that's a terrific thing about it. It makes it far easier to do. And here you can see me just adding um, dry brush there and popping a dry brush on, working it back through the paint uh, to drag up some of the paint but also kind of reveal a highlight. So this petal I decide to keep um, very very much yellow and quite bright colored uh, because of course it's flanked either side by the slightly green shadowy petals so I want this yellow one to really stand out. Then I transition that other one that you just saw down near the bottom because again it's just showing you um, using the three colors to achieve that kind of shadowed effect. Now with this side petal I do something a bit wrong so I thought I'd leave this in and show you because um, I put on the colors so I've got my yellow, I've got my brown, I've got my blue and I've got that white strip down the middle which is going to be my highlight but as you can see what I do is I mix all of the colors and paint over the white area that's going to be my highlight. 
So I'm thinking, okay, I can use the tissue there to blot it uh, and to blot that entire area and add the highlight back in. But because I'd colored over all of the white paper with paint, the highlight that I get is a highlight, but it's not as strong. It's not as strong and bold and as white as the other ones, which included the paper being left white and then be blotting sort of the edges around it. So that's something that I wished I had done a little bit differently so that that highlight was stronger. So I'm liking the depth that I'm getting from the petals, the shadows, the light areas, the highlights. So I've really got to start doing the interior of this um, yellow tulip. And one of the reasons I chose it was because it was a straight down, top down view uh, on this, which is well, not something I'd done before. So you've got all the petals around the edge, but then the interior is quite shadowed and a bit darker. And it's hopefully that contrast between light and dark which gives you quite a lot of depth in your picture. So you can see me starting to um, paint the inside of the flower and all I do is add the same three colors. Um, so I've got yellow, I've got the oak in there and also a little touch of um, deep sapphire because I don't want to overdo it because uh, the interior is kind of warm. It's, it's almost like lit like a lantern. It's dark, <laughs> but it is a warm kind of a yellow, which is why you see me trying to rely on the brown to make the yellow darker. I decide that's not quite dark enough, so on this section you can see me doing here. I add a lot more uh, of the deep sapphire, but as you can see when I start painting it, the deep sapphire should have learned from my earlier mistake. It's a very strong blue. It blends together to make a very, very dark green, perhaps too dark. Um, so... <laughs> I'm looking at it now thinking that bit's, you know, that kind of part of the interior is a bit too dark. How do I balance this? So I ease back a little bit on the deep sapphire for this, this section next to it. And I start to get in there with the brush and blend that together. And I'm much more pleased with the colors here, the sort of green to brown to yellow transition. Um, but it's still a little bit off with the green right next to it. And you can see I transitioned that last one there. And that's much too brown. Here I'm doing the background. And for the background, I just use two colors. I use spring green and I use the deep sapphire again so that there is a link between the background colors and the foreground flower. Um, so obviously deep sapphire is my shadow on the leaves. It's also my shadow um, in the background. So I'm just working this section by section, trying to keep it really loose, trying to keep it very, very wet into wet. Not too many um, tough, hard edges at all. The colors sort of bleeding and running together. I'm using a bigger brush here. I'm using a size eight again a synthetic brush um, to do those sections. Now you know I'm not happy with the, the kind of shadows in the interior in the center of the the um, flower so I mix up some kind of a, a greeny brown and I decide to go over all of those colors so I'm working wet on dry here in order to try and make that interior a bit darker which I'm kind of happy with uh, and then I decide I've also got to add some more definition some more contrast to the leaves in the background so I mix up um, again and I'm doing wet on dry again here so I mix up some color in a palette you can see me doing that I put the pen in the palette then I add the water um, so it's just a mixture of spring green and the deep sapphire. And I'm going in on the background and just trying to add some areas that are slightly darker just to give it a bit more contrast, but also pull out some of the leaf shapes, the pointy leaf shapes a little bit more. So it's time to do the center. And I know after doing a little bit of research, the center bit I'm working on is called the stigma. And you can see me here laying down a bit of the marigold yellow base, first of all. And there's the, there seems to be three sections to the stigma that you'll see me um, do one in detail and then the other two transitioned. And now this time I add a little bit of the deep sapphire first uh, and then oak last. And that's because I want to get a really clear idea of where my shadows uh, are going to be, you know, quite early with this. So I get the size four round brush and I'm in there and I'm blending together. So I'm blending the deep sapphire, the yellow and the oak together. But there is a certain kind of knobbly kind of shape to this stamen, you know, with an area that appears to be catching the light and an area which is more shadow, which I've tried to kind of trace when I was just, you know, coloring it in. But I try and make sure now as I add the water and work the colors around that this particular um, stamen has got a, almost a U shape that is kind of highlighted and then shadows towards the center and towards the outside. So that's what I'm trying to do with my brushwork here is kind of show and trace a kind of a U shape to it and then, you know, blend gently in with the shadows. And when it comes to doing the uh, other two parts of the stigma, I use exactly the same colors and I use exactly the same approach with the size four brush uh, in order to kind of show that they have, there's a weird kind of shape to them, but it's a kind of 3D quality to them as well. So then the other bits that I found out about in a bit of research are the uh, stamen, and those are the sort of tall bits around the edge. 
and here you can see me drawing on the stamen uh, and this is using the marigold, the oak and the deep sapphire. And I want them to be dark at the base towards light at the top so not only have I colored them that way but then when I come to add the water and blend the colors together I start in the yellow section, blend down into the oak bit and then blend down into the deep sapphire, the darkest shadow part of the, um, the stamen. I blend into that last and then I use the same colors and the same brushwork approach on all five of the stamen and it's the sort of the thin bit that's growing upwards is called the filament uh, and once I got all five of those bits done I need to do the top bits that is called the anther you can see I've been doing a bit of research on these tulips <laughs> so I use the yellow first of all I just they're going to be quite nice and light but they have a dark patch to them so again I do them yellow but then I put on um, a sort of bit of oak and I just finish off the picture by blending those sections together on the tops of the stamen so there's the finished picture. Um, I hope you got something out of this tutorial. If you use watercolors or if you use aqua markers or if you just draw flowers, uh, please leave a comment below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.